you know very well polity is one of the vital section of our preparation and it play a vital role very significant role in prelims examination as well as in mains examination welcome dear students i am kanaiya jha and in this session we will discuss about indian polity you know very well polity is one of the vital section of our preparation and it play a vital role very significant role in prelims examination as well as in mains examination even uh, you know very well that being a civil servant it is very obvious to know the idea know the provisions of indian polity reason behind it indian polity determines the legal environment for the civil servant and it is quite obvious for the civil servant to uphold the rule regulations and the constitutional mandate so here uh, i will discuss you know polity is quite lengthy so i will take i will discuss today a very interesting topic of this indian polity it is our union executive so you know very well union executive is the body of individual that are appointed for the purpose of execution of policy you know very well government government usually been divided into three branches the first is executive branch executive branch is dedicated for execution of policy second one is legislative branch and this branch is dedicated for formulation of law and next is the judiciary and judiciary interprets the legal provisions with respect to functions with respect to the legislation so here if we say or when it comes union legislative then it comprises five different bodies you know very well that it is our president so president is the executive head vice president is there to support the president or whenever the post of president office of president is supposed vacant in that case this person this office fulfill the requirement again next one is prime minister and the council of minister we will discuss one by one detail about that and last one is attorney general so in this session i will provide you the analysis about the president but here here a uh, first thing is that why a government is being divided into three branches executive is uh, quite uh, uh, separated uh, legislative is detached from the executive even the judiciary is detached so here this uh, system this model is a result of our interpretation our political development what happens you know very well earlier it was the monarch it was the sovereign ruler and be it some time all such power whether it is political power whether it is legislative power whether it is the judicial in that way what happened so it was it led to the concentration of power means our uh, mughal empire our uh, medieval rulers all exercise a uh, very unlimited uncontrolled rule over this territory it was not an uh, issue for india whether every year in the world the same kind of tension tension of power was there what it uh, did so it culminated in the practically pioneer the topic 
attempted to suppress the voice of the citizen and they exercise their monopoly very aware is scholar french scholar the effect of government was to be separated into three different parts. One body of government was to be released and taken at the corporation of the policy. Another body should be given responsibility to uh, execute that policy and the third body should check the legal parameters, the legal aspect of that execution and the formulation. This was uh, called the separation of power. Here, the word, a specific word is there, separation of power. Now, consider why separation of power become popular, become a buzz word all around the world. It was the United States of America and this country implemented the uh, very firm separation of power with their constitution soon after that other country like uh, france canada even ireland all implemented over the time even in our constitution some sort of this idea prevails so if we consider the government is divided into three branches polity uh, executive, legislative and judicial. In that case, there must not be a concentration of power. Means one branch cannot exercise uh, the whole sole power of government. Means despotic rule will not prevail. Again, consider if suppose executive mishandles or attempt to suppress the fundamental right. In that case, judiciary interfere can interfere and uh, evaluate the execution of policy. So this way, the fundamental rights of citizen will be ensured and check and balance will continue, will uh, carry out by different bodies. So this way, balance is being uh, reached by the constitution and what happens, so it controls the overall system. Getting this idea, uh, after this, we will discuss the President of India. So, what I said, President uh, is an apex authority. The President, as per the Constitution, considered as the executive head of the union, of the uh, central government. It means that whatever functions is being executed by central government is on behalf on the name of president. So theoretically, a uh, president is the head of the India, head of the central government. There are uh, immense power vested to this authority and very clear constitutional provisions are there. About uh, 50 about 5050 articles are there that is specify the power, even functions, even authority of this president. So, usually what happens in examination? Questions are, uh, some questions suppose, may be factual on the base, on the basis of the constitutional provision, like suppose which art, uh, article based question, uh, related with election of president, uh, related with suppose oath of president, impeachment of president may be part of your uh, examination. Some question may be uh, analytical. An analytical question can only be solved if we have idea about that authority, about that provision. So here, uh, the president usually considered quite uh, confusing quite, uh, we can say, 
detail. So I will provide you the idea how to prepare this topic in brief. So here the list of the president and you know very well it was uh, the uh, first we can say after enactment of constitution Rajinder Prasad the chairperson of the constituent assembly uh, elected as the first president of India in the year 1950. Thereafter, back to back, Rajendra Prasad again re-elected. Thereafter, Sarapalli, Radha Krishna came. Thereafter, Jakir Hussain, Varah Venkatgiri, again, Neelam Sanjeev Reddy, Yami Jail Singh, Rama Swami, Venkat Raman, Sankar Dyal Sarma, K. R. Narayanan, Kalam Sahab, Pratibha Patil, Pranam Mukherjee, Ramnath Kovin, and now Drupti Murmu is the president of India. So this way we have witnessed, we experienced several uh, very uh, famous, very uh, renowned, respectful person at the post of president. As far as the constitutional dimension is concerned. So here you can uh, classify the constitutional provisions related with president into two broad categories. The first category uh, deals with the general feature like suppose appointment, even the positions, even impeachment of the president. And here articles are quite detailed. Like suppose article 52, it says that there shall be a president. There shall be a president. So it is quite affirmative kind of a statement. So, whether it is day, whether it is night, whether it is morning, whether it is evening, this article means that there must not be a situation when the office of president shall be vacant. So, it is mandatory to have the office of president and the president in India. Article 53 is very uh, interesting and it clarify the position of the president of India. What it say? So, president of India shall be the executive head of the union. Means, execution of the work at central level will be carried out on the name of this president. Again, 53 says that he will be the supreme commander of the military of the army personals and this way our constitution specify determines that this post will be apex will be very high in order again again uh, two more article is here very considered uh, unlike britain like uk united kingdom it is the official name of the country united kingdom so, you know very well, in UK, there is constitutional monarchy. It means the king or queen holds their post on the basis of hereditary. It is uh, very different from the practice uh, in India. In India, our makers of constitution decided that no, we will not carry out, we will not implement this kind of monarchy or traditional uh, system of government. Rather, we allow the republic for, we uh, establish a republic form of government where even a common man will have opportunity to be the president, to be the head of the state and that is called the republic. How republic uh, will be exercised or will be uh, will be achieved. So for that, our makers of constitution provided two article that is 54 and the 55. Article 54 and 55 provides that the president shall be elected, but this election is not direct. Means people are not uh, taking participation in the exercise of election. 
whether this election is indirect. What is the meaning of indirect election here? So, president is being appointed by the elected representative. Means, suppose a uh, common men are there and we elect our MP, our MLA, our MLCs. So, this article says that for a uh, presidential election, MP and MLA will uh, cast their vote to elect the president. Here, very interesting fact that the, you know very well, number of MLA, MLA means member of legislative assembly, are about 7,000, while our member of parliament, about 10,000 it is, member of uh, the state legislative assembly, uh, total member strength is about 10,000. While uh, the strength of parliament is just about 700 together, means uh, about 500 in Lok Sabha and about 250 in Rajya Sabha. So there must be a difference, must be, we can say, imbalance condition. So makers of constitution decided that why not proportional representation system should be executed. If proportional representation system would be there, uh, we can evaluate, we can uh, make very, we can say, balanced vote value. So, the total vote value of MLA is uh, decided equal to the total vote value of the uh, member of parliament MPs. And this way, very, we can say, uh, detailed provision for the election of president is there and this way he is being elected, not uh, nominated. So that is a very unique thing in India with respect to president. And this basically uh, say that, this basically proves that we are the country with republic nature. So that is, again, some articles are here interesting, 58 specify the qualification for the election of president. There is no detailed qualification like president should qualify, uh, suppose he must be a graduate, he must be, uh, uh, suppose, uh, uh, have a degree kind of thing. These are not mentioned there. Only criteria is there. He must be above the age 35. And second one, he must be citizen. Here, interesting, citizen of India. Interesting thing, you know, uh, we allow citizenship through by birth, through uh, by incorporation of territory, by suppose uh, uh, naturalization. So, we have five different type of uh, uh, acquisition of citizenship. We consider citizens equal to citizens, whether he manages citizenship on the basis of naturalization or he is a citizen by birth, all will be equal with respect to the election of president. Means no such, uh, we can say, differentiation have been made in constitution about this. But in America, United States of America, it is very interesting that in America, only a person shall be appointed, elected as president if he is a natural born American citizen, only then he will be eligible. So that kind of criteria is not in India. Again, conditions uh, says that uh, he will not uh, accept any other, other uh, office of profit. Means suppose he must not engage with any company, any government occupation. It is the only means of livelihood to that person. So these are some conditions, qualification specified in constitution uh, to the president. Thereafter, Article 60 is quite interesting. Article 60 deals with the oath. And president takes oath uh, uh, before the uh, before the CJI, Chief Justice of India, uh, India, conducts the oath uh, ceremony of the president. Here, president 
takes oath with the word a uh, preservation protection and defense of the constitution so the three word are very uh, crucial here protect defend and preserve now consider this oath makes this person very dedicated for the protection of the constitution so that is the very interesting thing and the scholars opines that the oath nature of oath here is very clear this makes our president the custodian the guardian of the constitution so sometimes it confuses uh usually it consider that a uh, supreme court is the guardian or the uh, sentinel of our constitution so it is true supreme court is the first guardian of our constitution but here president is the second guardian of our constitution by virtue of this oath now third impeachment 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 is the process through which president can be removed from uh, his post okay so it is a very we can say a strict provision we borrowed we have taken this impeachment provision from the constitution of united state of america in our makers of constitution concluded that no these are quite objective so we should take only one criteria for the only one ground for the impeachment so in india there is only one ground that is violation of the constitution so if there is a case where president has violated the norms or the provisions of constitution that will be the ground for the impeachment of the president so this way we can remove this person from the post there after some provisions related with the election so election or the during election suppose uh, some mp ml seat are vacant in that case one cannot challenge the elections of president one more thing 57 re election eligibility for re election so here very interesting our constitution say that one can be re elected uh, again and again means there is no bar no restriction on re election here but in america you know very well there are restriction a person can be re elected once so here we have collected some idea about the uh, the constitutional provisions of the president now we will discuss the power and functions of president so look here uh, uh as far as president and their position is concerned so some article you should keep in mind like suppose article uh, 74 is very considerable here it says that there shall be a council of minister to add and advise the president under the chairmanship of prime minister so this means that our constitution has not given the substantial power to our president rather we have enacted we have implemented the parliamentary form of democracy and you know very well prime minister and council of minister are responsible for uh, the lok sabha and lok sabha can pass the no confidence motion against council of minister is there any provision related with president can uh, lok sabha or our uh, people's assembly can remove president by passing this kind of no confidence motion so it is no so by our actually uh, vision was very clear we implemented this form and here we said that whoever whoever uh, rule uh, this country 
must be responsible to the representative of citizen and this way we have implemented uh, the uh, representative form of democracy in direct democracy but still here uh, whatever functions uh, given to president is considerable as per the as for the prelims examination as for the means examination so first we should classify the functions executed by the president we can classify it uh, it into executive power legislative power financial power judicial power diplomatic power military and emergency it is quite uh, common you know very well most of the book provides this information we will discuss what is new here uh executive power so what is the meaning of executive power executive power means power to execute policy how policy can be executed policy can only executed if suppose president is supported by the structure by the personals so here what happens a uh, president appoints first prime minister on the basis of prime minister he appoints the a uh, council of minister again there is a provision for portfolio and president distributes the functions among council of minister and again council of minister heads particular departments that is the body of appointed officers is ips and other individuals are there so this way they carry out execution so that is the executive power here president not only given power to appoint several authority like pre, uh, uh, prime minister even con- ministers even uh, you know very well uh, the election commissioner even uh, the cic chief information commissioner even uh, it is the chair person of sc sp obc commission so several individual even it is president that appoints the finance commission chairman article to it you know so president this way uh, arrange the structure and hire different personnel for the purpose of execution of the law even here suppose a uh, uh, suppose any merger sale or purchase happen by the or carry out by the central government like suppose our defense ministry has purchased a rafi so this purchase must be a uh, considered behalf of the president so president is there and it is responsible for execution of all work as far as legislative power is concerned so legislation you know very well legislation is an exercise of formulation of law policies or rule our constitution is quite unique quite different what we have did so we not implemented the very rigid form of separation of power rather we accepted the fusion of separation of uh, fusion of power between the executive and legislative body so keep in mind again what happens here so a uh, president considers as an indispensable part of parliament means that our parliament when comes it refers three bodies that is lok sabha the uh, upper house rajya sabha lower house and third one is our president so president is considered an integral part of our parliament and here this uh, president determines structure as well as function of the legislature first we will discuss structure how structure is being uh, being uh, intervened being controlled by the president so you know very well uh, if we consider the members so do uh, lok sabha or rajya sabha is there and these are the body of representative elected by the citizens but in lok sabha earlier 
not now earlier it was article 331 331 and it empowered president to appoint two members from anglo indian community but later what happens uh, by 104th constitution amendment act this third uh, 300 31 article suspended means now president is not required to uh, appoint to member from anglo indian community in lok sabha second as far as rajya sabha is concerned so you know very well that president can appoint five member in a rajya sabha amongst a uh, literature art social science and science sector so this way the structure is determined by the president again you know pro tem speaker so pro tem speaker is also appointed by the president as far as function is concerned so legislative function you know very well article triple one 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 what it say a bill can only be enacted if president has given their assent so it is very mandatory for each bill to have presidential approval okay so without approval of president in india no bill can be enacted that is the first thing again there is no time frame uh, specified in our constitution so what happens president uh, actually it is a very rare case what happens it was gyani jalsi and you know very well uh, in 1984 when indira gandhi assassinated rajiv gandhi become the prime minister and rajiv gandhi and their colleague considered felt that uh, this gyani jail singh may uh, might have conspired this assassination so there were bitterness hostility between the uh, president and the prime minister so at that point of time some sort of conflict was there and gyani jail singh the then president once exercised the pocket veto so article triple one miss misses the time frame and this was uh, the case when president can uh, exercise the pocket veto power so our president have three veto power that is suspensive veto absolute veto and the pocket veto and all are uh, all are the part of article triple one so that is the legislative power again you know very well that uh, suppose on will on a bill there is a deadlock between the lok sabha and the rajya sabha how this will be resolved so in our constitution there is very clear provision that when such deadlock or conflict is there president may organize a joint session by virtue of article 108 that is very so be clear now again come suppose parliament is not in session how the urgent matter can be handled so our constitution say that in that particular condition if condition is very unforeseen very unfor unprecedent very urgent in that case president can uh, promulgate the ordinance by virtue of article 123 so this way uh, we can say that president uh, president exercises legislative power and legislative functions are quite interesting here as far as financial power is concerned so you know very well budget budget is the detail of the account of the central government it is the detail of the income and expenditure so what happens constitution says that the budget shall be presented before the house uh, on the name of the president so president is considered as uh, has uh, presented the budget before this legislative behalf of executive or this way it works again it is the president that be uh, that may establish finance commission time to time 
to distribute the uh, revenue between central and the state government again judicial power is there you know very well a uh, judicial power particularly if we say to appointment of judges even in supreme court even in high court is being done by whom it is our president article 124 is very clear and it says that president will appoint the judges in supreme court with consultation of the uh, collegium it become so there is a collegium and on recommendation of collegium uh, usually president hires the judges again there is uh, the pardoning power handed over to our president president can pardon the death sentence can pardon the sentence awarded by the military court and again can pardon if the case related with the central jurisdiction so this way judicial power is quite uh, interesting there diplomatic power diplomatic you know very well what is diplomacy so diplomat <coughs> messy diplomacy is the act of executing the foreign policy so diplomats with their tactics with their strategy carry out the foreign policy here president is considered as the head of the government and all such treaty agreement even uh, the submit is considered as behalf of on the name of president so he is responsible for that diplomacy as well again here uh, if suppose uh, the appointment of uh, the diplomats is concerned so it is the authority that appoints diplomats again military power so here president is considered as the head of the military organization and he is responsible for the proclamation of war emergency now last one is emergency power so you know very well there are three different type of emergency listed in our constitution the first enumerated emergency under article 352 is the national emergency national emergency uh is a very a specific detailed provision so on the after amendment made uh, through 44th amendment act so this say that if suppose war external aggression and armed rebellion is there in that case president can promulgate the national emergency on written here very interesting fact on a written advice of the cabinet the word cabinet is very specific with under the article 352 okay this made later when uh, in 1975 the 352 misused so there are <laughs> deals with the president's presidential rule in a state and last one is 360 60 that is the financial emergency so this way we can see the detail uh, provision about the president in our constitution and we can easily mug up all such thing if we are aware with the structure of this topic like here i draw a structure so if we say the president how we should deal with so president can be easily handled if we classify the part the provisions related with president into two category that is the provisions related with the uh, the position 
पोजीशन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट पोजीशन ऑफ प्रेसिडेंट एंड द पावर एंड फंक्शन ऑफ द प्रेसिडेंट so this way we can easily handle all such aspect related with this topic for prelims examination as far as mains examination is concerned so mains examination in mains exam this topic uh, is considered very uh, less relevant very we can say so so topic here uh, earlier it was portion on uh, the comparative study with the american president so and again sometime it asked position of president with respect to the prime minister so it is very true that prime minister is the real head executive in india but it is also true that situation sometime offers more power to president means suppose there is a coalition government and a uh, divided uh, majority is there in that case president may appoint the person who may prove their majority at full so this kind of thing happens a uh, president can uh, execute their veto power without taking advices of council of minister so these are some sort of uh, we can say opportunities there with president and that is only for the guidance so here president is not an executive real executive rather president is the philosopher friend of the government if suppose government is not doing right in that case it is the fundamental duty of this president to guide this government as per the mandate given by the constitution okay so we have concluded some dimension related with the president in this session uh, i think you have enjoyed in the next classes in the next video we will discuss more topic so uh, all the best all of you goodbye